All right, it's real. Most time, Christ bless your body. Most time, Christ bless you too. Okay, so all praises to the Most High for bringing us together to fellowship and keep His commandments, learn what His will is. Today's lesson is about being fed and feeding the flock of the Lord. So you could title this, they were scattered because they had no shepherd. They were scattered because they had no shepherd. So that's our job is to feed the flock. Let's open up in Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 3. Start there. Out. This is Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 3. There is a voice of howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. And so there's a lot of people that do a lot of harm amongst Israel. We'll give everybody a moment to get settled down, please. We're in the book of Zechariah chapter 11. And three again, it says, there's a voice of the howling of the shepherds for their glory spoiled. A lot of people don't even realize that they shepherds, that that's what they're supposed to be doing. A lot of people don't understand that their job is to be a shining light, a beacon of hope, be an example. So the top says that they're shepherds. The bottom says, see, howling is their voice, the voice of the roaring of young lions. For the pride of Jordan. Spoil. So Israel, we lived around the Jordan River. Was spoiled, meaning has been corrupted, destroyed. Remember, we're the salt of the earth. It's something that we've lost. That we've lost. Savor. We have to get it back. Go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> we have to get it back. We have to teach it. We have to teach it. You have to walk in it so that people could see it. Verse 4 says, Thus says the Lord, My God, feed the flock of the slaughter when you feed remember how Christ had asked Peter if he loved him and what did Peter say 
He said, yes. Then the Lord asked him again, do you love me? He said, yes. And then what did Christ say? Feed my sheep. But Peter couldn't feed the sheep until something happened with him. And what was that thing that needed to happen with him? Hmm? Go ahead, Al. Uh, for this transformation or the uh, Holy Spirit? I'm, you asking or telling me? I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, you could say you have to wait for what. So I was, I was saying, like, for the Holy Spirit to be taught. It was something that he had to do. It was a transformation or something that Peter had to go through. And when he goes through it, that's when he will be able to do something with the men. But he had to go through it first. Without going through it, uh, it was nothing he can do. You know what that was? Luke 22. Luke chapter 22 and 31. This is Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Stop. Without a show of hands, how many people be feeling that Satan provoking you, tempting you, desire to have you? You... you by what you maybe you should know it yourself or are you being told that if you've been told that it's true it's true a lot of us we don't want to you don't want to admit it but you got to get out of that denial state satan have desired to have you if satan desired to have simon he said that he may sift you as wheat when something is sifted What's left amongst the sifted thing? When something is sifted, what's left in a strainer? You're shaking it. That's the sift. You're shaking it. You're shaking it. What's left? The actual food. Like the gold. Like the unusable stuff. The refuge. The refuge. Because all the good falls through. The refuge falls. I mean, the refuge stays. All the good stuff, it, it goes down through, and the refuge remains. So if, if Satan is going to sift him as the wheat, the wheat is going to fall, and the refuge remains. That's what's going to be left. So once Satan zones in on a man or a woman, that's why you don't want Satan to be interested in you. Satan will be interested in you based upon your thought process. What are you interested in? What are you showing him you interested in? What are your desires? What, are your, what is your behavior like? Remember, an unclean spirit, when it goes from a person, after you put it out, when it comes back, how does it find you? Bobo? It finds it swept, gone, it finds it empty. That's how it's supposed to. But then it'll come back with another lust. That's why you got to all sin that's unrighteous, you got to get rid of all sin. Do we not know that we are making it from day to day and week to week and month to month because we're preaching all the time, day to day, week to week, month to month, all throughout the year about getting rid of sin. Do you not really, you ain't realize that yet? The moment we start preaching against sin, 
and stop enforcing the laws, what's going to happen to you? You're going to fall because you're going to give in to the temptation that Satan is put, offering you. You got rid of the first sin. What about the second and third sins? Mistakes and faults or whatever. What about those? So you keep coming and listening and hearing because sooner or later the spirit is going to speak on something pertaining to what you are struggling with. And you're being taught and told how to watch out for sin and Satan because he's trying to come through that process. He'll leave, but he'll come back. When he come back, he's by, he ain't by himself. He's going to come in through the lust that's left with another spirit. And you're going to open a door. We'll watch your TV. And the detectives are trying to f figure out how did these killers get into the house? They look for open windows. All the windows are locked. They look at the doors. The door jams are not kicked in. They say, well, either somebody lived here, did this, and left, or what? They did what? They let them in. You let the bad guy in. That happens in real life. You let the bad guy in and he kills you. It happens through the spirit. You let the bad guy in. So you got to be mindful of that. Because he ain't coming in to help you. He's coming in to destroy you, to sift you. So there ain't nothing love. Read the next part. Verse 32. No, verse, yes, 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. So who's telling this man that he has to change? The Christ himself. Telling this brother that he got to change. Wait a minute now. Did we find a flaw in the scriptures? Wait a second, y'all. Is that true? Peter, the apostle, walked with Christ? How could he need to be converted? Hmm. I don't know about that. He needs a change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he needs to change. Do you think he told himself that he needed to change? He didn't even recognize that Satan was gunning for him. Just like other us. We don't recognize Satan gunning for us. We're cool. I'm cool. I ain't did nothing. It's a whole time. <laughs> sifting. Satan is sifting you. All your good stuff is just falling. You falling from this good behavior, that good behavior, this righteousness, that righteousness. You don't even see it. Mentally, you denial. What's left? Refuge. All this stuff, you can't eat that. It's trash. That's a stalk. That's a leaf. That's bark. So it took somebody else to tell Peter, just like it takes somebody else to tell you. You better start believing them. You don't believe them, you're going to get punished. All that hated reproach of what? Enter into life? Anyway, huh? I'm going to enter into life anyway. All that hated reproof shall get the kingdom. All that hated reproof shall enter into life. Israel got all these different sayings on what's going to happen regardless. I know what that Bible says, but no, it says, all that hated reproof shall die. So he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brother. Then he going to turn into a heck of a guy. He's a jolly good fellow. Then he going to turn. But only when the conversion happens, 
That's what got to happen with us, Israel. Your conversion is a necessity. Some people treat it optional. Hmm, do I really want to change? Let's see. Do I want to change today? Let me think about it. Do I want to humble myself? Let me think about it. The only way that we could feed the flock of the Lord is that we have to convert. We have to, we, we, we got to change. Go to St. John, the third chapter. St. John chapter 3, verse 3. This is St. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oh, this and go to Acts the third chapter. Hey, Shalom, sisters and brothers. Y'all please share the video. Happy Sabbath and Most High in Christ bless each and every last one of you. And I'd like to thank you for attending this class. Hope and pray you stick around and learn something. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. This so in John 3, no, excuse me. In John 3, the scripture said, except you be born again. Now, Acts 3 19, read that. This is Acts 3 and 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And be born again. Repent and be born again. Christ said in Luke 22 that Peter had to be born again. Peter had to be converted. We cannot feed the flock of the Lord if we're not converted. That's going to be the issue. Once we get into our lesson, okay, uh, where are we at? Repent, you in Acts, right? Yes. Okay, repent, start over. This is Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Converted is born again. So then we're going to go back and we're going to get that about being born again. And however, if this points to the conversion process, hasn't happened yet or the born again process hasn't happened yet don't let your feelings be hurt do not let your feelings be hurt remember that's a level of com commitment or that's a transition that happens because you are committed if you know that you haven't committed yourself yet then that's the reason why it didn't happen now However, did Peter love did Peter love Christ? Yes. Did Christ love Peter? Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, is it was it too late for Peter when Christ told him that? No. So Christ was very optimistic and very hopeful and very positive and said, when it happens, make sure that you strengthen your brother, make sure that you help. So if it was impossible and he couldn't do it, Christ wouldn't have told him that and led him to believe that his expectation from him was for him to be able to strengthen anybody, to shepherd anybody, right or wrong. Christ wouldn't have misled him like that, right? But he had to shoot it, shoot it to him straight and tell him that Satan is coming for you. You have to, you got to give this up. If you don't give it up, 
and you see the cost of not giving it up the thing is satan is not telling you that what you're doing wrong is associated with the judgments and penalties and mishaps we understand that what did it say what you're doing wrong is associated with the judgments and mishaps but satan is not letting you know that because he's hiding it from you he's hiding it from you why this is happening unto you why that is happening unto you you just blame it on the weather you just blame it on this guy he wicked he an edomite all right this is an unrepentant israelite he's wicked not really realizing that the creator created creatures to do his bidding to do his will and to lay off to lay on strikes or uh, strokes it will make you uncomfortable so peter turned out okay he turned out okay he had to transition and he was an adult he had to transition he had to continue his education in the scriptures he had to learn he didn't just be like oh i'm on a level i'm cool and kick back like a lot of people do you are sadly mistaken if you think that you have hit the pinnacle and the ceiling height of your education in the truth about following the most high christ you deceive we ain't never gonna stop learning every day is gonna teach you something people that you fellowship with people that you talk to I learned something today riding the church I'm driving here my mom called me she said hey you busy I said yeah but what's up she said was you the one I talked to about that door I said uh, you might want to talk to Reese. See, I wonder, was it you or Maurice? That's my brother. Mm -hmm. Now nah, it was Betty. She said, yeah, I think it was him, that middle door upstairs. I said, yeah, because you ain't talked to me about no middle door. Mm -hmm. She said, okay. She said, what you doing? I said, on my way to church. She said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, listen, you be careful and have a good nice time and pray for us i said okay and got off the phone israel we hate and despise our people that ain't turned unto the most high she out of the genuine of her spirit even though she don't serve the most high wish me well pray for us and kept it moving we at times don't have nothing good to feel about somebody because they don't feel what we feel what did that teach me because i had that same feeling but that feeling ain't right to just they lost and now i've lost my sensitivity Sound like we got a rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <a> little man. <laughs> Even the mouse up in here listening to the scripts. He <laughs> in the whole oh praise. <laughs> <laughs> but sensitivity. We cannot lose our sensitivity because it is it is spawn hate when it's not supposed to. Okay, um, so we're, I mean everybody understand that part. Okay. Um,
Conference caller, make sure your phone is muted. There are two attendees in this conference. So where we're at, mm -hmm. and I was referring to Peter in Luke 22. And I guess I was elaborating on that because us being in sin and having to change and convert that we have to got to understand that there is a time frame that that thing happens. And if you finding out today, tonight, that, well, maybe my, I haven't converted yet, so I'm not born again yet. And you real with yourself. Don't get shook. It is what it is. I'm not glory, glorying because I spoke a message that made you feel like you are not born again. That doesn't make me feel happy. I use, I'm using the example pertaining to Peter because he was a man and Christ had to tell him that he had to change and be converted. And then he could become the shepherd that he needed to be. That's an example I was somebody that walked with Christ on a daily basis or whenever he saw him, he was, he was one of his devoted followers that had deep reverence and respect and, and love to say, man, I'll go to the death with you, man. I'm down with you. But Christ still had to acknowledge and tell him, he had to acknowledge and tell him truth. But he had to be real with him so that he can gauge himself based upon his behavior. Because Christ know your heart, but he also see your behavior. You could love somebody, but you can also love yourself, too, to the point to where you're going to go after whatever is in your mind. You can go out to covetousness. You can say, I love the most high. You know, yo, man, I love, brother, I love you. I, I hear it all the time. I respect you. I understand. I believe the word that you're preaching, but that's not stopping you from smoking drugs, having sex, and stealing when you have to. So the love that you have for me as a teacher, that's not being questioned. The quite what's being questioned and brought and put on the table is how you have you converted. Because you've converted, then that means that nobody will be seeing your sins, a change in your behavior. Your spirit will bear witness to you. You understand the scriptures because you apply it. The love that we have one for another does not trump God's commandments and his laws and statutes. And should not be um consider the well if i got if i got the love then that's enough no that's not enough that's respect but that's not enough what's enough what we have to do is we got to make sure that we send send packing now you have to understand why you must send it packing because there is a consequence that comes forward. And it doesn't always happen at the end of the world. It happens on a day-to-day -day basis. And don't nobody want short, short hours on the chair, a sick trial, they own self sick. Nobody want to be afflicted by the most high, wounded by the most high, rejected and denied by the most high. Nobody wants that. You have a lot of people that do not learning about the Most High. They fall victim to all the things that happen that the Most High allowed to happen. But you being smarter than that, you are seeking out. 
the thing that is good. And in seeking out the thing that is good, guess what's happening? You have something in your mental to reason with and fight against along with the scriptures to fight against the lust of the flesh, the desires, your thoughts, and even Satan when Satan come in and try and tell you to go ahead and give in to what you've been thinking about. You wanna do that? Who can do something about it? Only God can judge you. This. So when that happens, now you need to come out the same scriptures and say it is written. It is written. You can't do that. I can't tempt the Lord. I can't see. I can't put myself in a position to see if the most high is going to just allow me because I'm weak sometimes to sin. Hold this and go to um, Ecclesiasticus. Please ask us five and six. This is Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse six. And say not, his mercy is great. Right. Go ahead. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners. Right. So, so small of the mind will actually tell you that the most high is he knows that you've been fighting and trying let's give a time frame a nice little time frame i ain't did this in how long Seven years. seven years let's try three months that's a long time if you ain't did something in seven years there's no reason to do it you know you built up but you can be tempted after that but you know most people their fight the battle is a, a shorter span but if it's seven years for you then keep in mind seven years but let's say three months. I ain't did this in three months. Then all of a sudden you start thinking. It says, when it says say not, it's going into and think not. Because mentally, you're gonna be thinking this. Because when you're gonna commit sin, you don't come up and say, Elder, his mercy is great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? I'll be like, what, brother? You trying? You finna try? You finna try that? You finna convince me to look at you while you sin and be like, His mercy is great. So the say not is don't say it to yourself. Don't put it into your thought to say to yourself. His mercy is going to cover that action. Even though you've been fighting, you fought three months. And woo, this is a time either you celebrate it or this is a time that you don't care. People get to a point to where they will feel stressed and be like, I don't care. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. What is a pacifier to a baby? It makes them stop what? It makes them stop crying. Or if you don't want the pacifier, then you're going to turn around and you're going to give them something else. Or you're going to get a baby something else, et cetera. In other words, there are people that feel like 
they can pacify the most high with one thing or the other. I'll do this or that or the third to cover my sins and he's going to be good. I'm going to be back in graces with the most high. Strike four. You don't even get a strike four. You struck out. You wrong with that. It's nothing that you're going to be able to do. Do not claim the mercy of the most high. And I'm going to intentionally get tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired and go and commit this sin. The whole purpose of us trying to be the best that we can be is for what purpose? Look how we got the most high took us off the trail for a minute to educate us, to bring us back on the trail. What do we get off for? Because we got to be what? Converted. We got to be converted so that we can do what? On, we can be the right type of shepherd. Mm -hmm. And how you going to be a good shepherd if we're doing this? You spending too much time doing this. You got to be the type of brother and the type of sister, the type of man and the type of woman to get it right. There's enough people getting it wrong. When is the Israel that's of the most high God of the Bible going to show up and, and show out? Yeah. Shine like stars. Glitter and spark. When? Or do we still not understand why we shouldn't sin? We still we stuck there. Let's not get stuck. Let's understand. We don't want to do that because that's the mother of famine. That's why we're here. That's why we're here in North America, living in the slums, the ghettos, the hoods, up under spittle as a government. Foolishness. Yes, sir. Um you could have like so much teaching, just like you brought up Peter, uh, following how shine, learning from him, and mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. But even in the scripture, it said that uh Shai told him that uh before the crow's crook, you would deny me three times. So like the coming of his cru crucifixion, you know, after all the teaching and all the examples Christ made for him, he still denied him. Uh, and so my thing is that what what really converted Peter? What really converted him? And 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 what really made the or what really caused the father to forgive forgive him and, and, and strengthen him so he could become better? And now we're reading about him and stuff like that. What time? Time. Time. Because we grow. We live, we learn, and we grow. Okay. Our spirit gets stronger in us over time. Okay. People will do when Christ told them that you're going to deny me. Remember, it's during the same time that he was telling them that he had to be converted. So his just because somebody tells you to do the right thing today doesn't mean that today. You go and do the right thing. You're going to do the right. The thing is to deliver you the information so that you can see, so that you can start mentally processing it and putting it in, putting it in the fight. Just imagine this. You in a fight with rocks. Then somebody give that other person a bowl. And that was like, whoa, Oh, they, they, they give you a bow. You shoot back. Like, wait a minute. Then they give you a machine gun. Now you're in a fight with a machine gun. So our job is to give you the ways of the most high so that you can mentally start processing it and incorporate it into the fight. When I give you the thing to process, the fight is not over. I just help you to survive the fight. You still got to fight. Now you got to use the thing that was given unto you. That's why it's important for us to listen and for us to pay attention, because that's the way that the most high 
communicates with you and shows you a way out. And that's what is going to go into the shepherd's process in this thing. And then um, teaching the people correctly. Because if you're not taught correctly, then they're going to, they're never going to change. They're not going to turn. You know, a lot of times um, we just are given stuff and we left to ourselves. Like you don't let children raise themselves. You don't just give them food and walk away. You make sure they eat it properly. If they eating it improperly, you say, no, do not stuff your mouth like that. Spit it out and eat in small portions. You know, you don't put the food on the table. You leave it on a plate. No, you don't lick your plate. You ask for more. No, you don't use your hand, use your fork. So the whole time, this is a child in a childish state of mind doing all of the things wrong. It's not personal. It doesn't destroy you or hurt you. And it doesn't mean this child is to be destroyed. That means this child needs to learn. So now you you sit in on you take and you tell them, you know, you don't leave us, don't make a mess, stuff on the floor. You eat her at the table. Children will stand at the table doing other stuff and eating. You know, you separate that time from this time. Now it's supper time. So you sit down, eat the meal, clean up behind yourself, put these dishes away, make sure your spot is clean, and then you go play. So that's they live and then they learn by teaching. And that teacher has to stay attached to that student. That's what it was like with Peter and Christ. So all the little things, bugged out stuff that he was doing, Christ had to show him and tell him about those things. Did that make him a bad person? No, he had to live and he had to learn. And that is put in there, not for us to think bad about him, but for us to reflect ourselves and say, hey, I'm, it's the time that I ought to be teachers, but I still need to be taught because there are people that need this fruitful example and this example it has to be right it cannot be self-willed it cannot be through somebody that oh yeah give place to satan it cannot you cannot have the best of both worlds because sin feels good and it's not just one manner of sin you got people that like seafood and they got to give it up. You got people that like swine's flesh. They like to cook with it. They like it will make the greens taste better. Yeah, they got to give it up. So there's a lot of different sins. You got people that like to dress a certain way because, you know, like say, for instance, if you bring, um, let's use the female, a woman. You put a woman in a situation to where she might be around a hundred women. That's why they have pageants. Not promoting a beauty pageant, but I'm saying. Because these women feel that they are exceptional when it comes to proportions. This area is petite, this area is proportion. When others, they just build Wash and dry your bill. <laughs> no, you know, I, we, sisters, you sisters here are not built like washers and dryers. I'm just using this as as an example. I say heads in the back rolling, okay, and whatever. No. <laughs> so back. Back to the example. Woman, well proportioned. Nice height. When I say nice height, meaning, uh, I don't know, whatever people of, when it comes to proportion height, she's got height, she got portions, 
the thing is, now she wants to show it. So she's addicted to what? Vain glory, right? People struggle with that. Why she and feels like why can't I flaunt it? They call it slave. And be like, I'm a slave. I'm finna kill them. I don't know through all ages people been <laughs> killing it. <laughs> I will knock them dead with this. <laughs> people like to look good. Now you got to convince this person not to try and be a magnet to themselves because it causes unnecessary attention, a struggling and stumbling block for you and for others. So that's got to change. Now, along that way, that person is going to be preached to and teach to so that she can really understand that you can't walk this type of path. Well, what does it hurt? What, you know, that might not happen today. She might not truly understand what it hurts and that it don't help. Not today. The most I might end up rebuking her because the Lord does know how to communicate with his people. Our job is to give them something to think about, to process. Most I come in into your mind. Sometimes the bell just goes off. People know how to figure it out. People know how to put it together. The most I know is how to do that. I've learned to let that process happen. I've also learned to keep saying something too. When women are repenting, I stop y'all from doing all of that stuff. Stop being a magnet. This is what sisters look like. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11 and 22. This is Proverbs 11 and 22. As it, hold up. This is Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 22. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. As a jewel of gold. You take a golden earring. Sisters like earrings and the nose. This is makes, makes you look good. Don't go snatching them out now. <laughs> But there's nothing, but see, there's nothing wrong with nose rings. But sisters like that. Read on though. Proverbs. So is a fair. No, you it says as a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. So you take the pig, take a pig, oink, oink. He dirty, big old pot belly pig. Huge. Let's make him make him disgusting. He just come up out of the thing. He could barely move. And now you put that put that ring in his nose. A nugget. Put him a nugget up in there. All right. That's how it is. As a jewel of gold in a swine snout. Go ahead. So is a fair woman. So is a a fair woman. Go ahead. Which is without discretion. She don't have discretion. So she wants to flaunt it. You want to look good? Now you 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 on the runway? What is what are we doing here? What's going on? Like attention? 
Q. Hmm? Hmm? What's this? What's going on? So when I meet you and you come into for help, I got to tell you the truth. Okay, you might want to start slashing this type of behavior because this is the behavior of boredom, Harley tree. You know those people, what are they calling you for? What are they texting you for? What are they in the inbox for? What are they commenting for? They see your face and those are the same nut jobs that is incorporating your picture in their mind when they're in the midst of wickedness, in the midst of burning lust. Who put that light there like that? You put it out there. Your photo shoot. Your runway mental activity. No discretion. No well thought out action to tell you not to do that. The scriptures say beauty is vain, worthless, false. So to put yourself, now am I saying don't take care of yourself? Nope. That's not what I'm saying. But when your objective is 5,000 pictures for no reason, <laughs> you fishing for something. I just like taking pictures. I know what you like. That's the difference between me and you. Maybe you don't understand what's going to happen because it is. You won't ever be able to get yourself together because somebody is always promoting or engaging in you and stirring up the carnal side of you. And you cannot leave it alone because in your mind, you'll be like, surely this is not the reason why I'm having such poor success. And you having people lust after you. You just hurt somebody else. Your understanding of how you are living is hurting somebody else. You will wound somebody's weak conscience. People looking at you. So that's just an example. So our mission is to give you the tools that it takes to see how you have to change. And now it's up to you to incorporate those things into the fight that you got to fight so that you can change because you will not be able to be the shepherd of the sheep and feed the sheep until you convert. That doesn't make you a bad person. Is bringing out the reality of this situation that that change has not taken place yet. The Bible says, examine yourself. Whether you are truly in this faith. Are you in this for you? Are you in this because the most high got you in it? What's the difference? I know it sounds kind of funny, but. You might be sitting in here, you say, I'm okay, I'm in here for me. But we don't do we know what self-will is? Now we're in here because the most high got us in here. Now the Lord has got some, He got a job for us to do. He said, walk it this way. If you are in here because you say, I, I'm in here because I want to be in here, that means you're gonna do what you want to do. Now, truly, we do have to be fully persuaded within ourselves and say, hey, I'm here because I want to be here. That's one thing. I that's understand. But now being here, be willing and ready to let the Lord direct your paths to the point to where you ain't going to ever at any point lean to your own understanding at no time, in no shape, no form, no fashion. <laughs> With not anybody. Look at the level of the requirement that's being said. When you talk to this man, that man, this woman, 
that woman, this child, that baby, the way you treat a dog, look at what's required of you. This is higher than you. When something is us, we do it our way. When something is of the Lord, we do it his way. That's what's being said to you. Because that could make you imperfect. You could be flawed. When we read the revelations and Christ had off against different churches, he went to the leaders and said, I understand you this and that, but I got off against you. So in one aspect, you may have given place to a self-willed spirit. And that's what we're trying to avoid. A self-willed spirit. We all have it. We all have to kill it. Slow down and think about what's in front of you. Got up this morning, ready. All of a sudden, the dog is running around in the house just bucking and bucking and I said, she only come when she wants some attention or when she wants something to eat or something to drink. I'm thinking like, okay, let the dog out. This is, she just went out. I'm like, well, what are you? She plays herself. Holy says she's trying to play. Rubber. I'm finna put her out so I could get dressed. She's still running around. She looked at me and lay down and turned upside down. I said, oh. I said, I know. Calm down. Not to myself, to a beast to talk to her. To, you want to you want play? Calm down because I can't do it now. Rub her up, rub her up, rub her up, rub her up. She lay down. She get, get her set up. She settled. Like, calm down. The reason why I, I'm saying that, even though it means nothing to you, to me it makes perfect sense. I said, pay attention to what's in front of you. You have to respond accordingly to what's in front of you. You cannot ignore it. Even... A beast, find that for me, about the beast and a man carrying it. Even a beast will need a certain level and type of attention. Even the beast. A child, a woman, a man. No, At no point can you forget about what we do. I have too. And I do, but I'm I'm living and I'm learning. I'm gonna tell you something about me. I am going to learn every day. I am going to learn every day. I'm looking for something that I don't understand so I can learn. What is this? Why is this responding like that? What do I need to do for the most high to help me to see this? Are you doing the same thing or are you just dismissing the person or the thing that's in front of you and not really caring about them. Who's confused on what I'm saying? Uh, let me see if I can find any bear with me. about how a man treats his beast. Mm
Proverbs 12. Ten on my back. Pops. Proverbs 12 and verse 10. This is Proverbs 12 and 10. A righteous man regarded the life of his beast. Right. <laughs> you don't overlook that. The righteous man regarded the life of even his beast, man. He care about his beast. Like, I was like, oh, come here. What's up? Calm down. You want some attention? No ain't the time. What's up? What can I do for you? You, you, you galloping and bucking and it's trying to play. I can't do nothing like that. But let me give you some, let me show you some attention. What's up? I'm with you. She was just as content when I did that. A righteous man regarded the life of his beast. We gotta pay attention to everything. Even it so isn't. A brother, a sister, the wife, husband, even the child, even aren't they more valuable than a beast? So why wouldn't we regard regard that life and make sure that when we tend to one another, that we tend to one another um, with satisfactory story. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Right. The cruel have no tender mercies. In other words, a the, the cruel don't care. They don't give a dang. Have anybody ever been dealt with you like they don't care? They don't care? They don't care? I don't care what you say. I don't care how I deal with you. The tender mercies of the cruel don't exist. So we cannot be cruel. Change. Conversion. Leave that and let's finish Acts. Book of Acts chapter 3. This is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Right. Repent and be converted. Do we remember we came from John the third chapter from here, right? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. So the whole purpose of being born again is why? Our sins can be blotted out. Why you think, Javon? Just following on, listen. Do you need a break? Remember, Christ said, if we don't, if we're not born again, if we don't be born again, what happens? You cannot inherit the kingdom. So the whole purpose of converting, if you don't convert, you can't inherit the kingdom. So if you're going to walk your whole life and riffraff, you can kiss the kingdom goodbye. The resurrection from the dead, you're going to be judged. You must be born again. So now, you see where it says that your sins may be blotted out? 
Because if your sins are not blotted out, your sins are going to be wrote as if they were wrote with a diamond pointed pen, like engraved that you cannot just erase out. That means the sins are that. It's gonna be reported. This person was selfish. This person was injurious. What does injurious mean? What is the root word of it? To injure. You hurt somebody by what you said. A lot of people think that you didn't do anything to him. I didn't put my hands on you, but you use words. Words can hurt. They can injure people. The Bible says words break the bones. So sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. That's not true. Words do hurt. So you have to be mindful of the words that you use because that is sin that's wrote in the book of life against you. And until you change and never do those things again, what are you talking about six months, three months? I ain't did this and et cetera, et cetera. We talking about meddle no more with them forever. If you cannot come to those terms, realize that you're going to bust hell. You ain't going to even bust it open. You're just going to be a zip. You ever heard a fly hit that little electric thing? That's all you did. It didn't even, it didn't even rock the little buzzer zapper, did it? <laughs> you you just going to be another zoop. <laughs> it's so hot zoop. That's it. You know, you ain't going to bust it open like you something. <laughs> no. To avoid that, we got to deal with us. So that the stuff that we have done it's not counted against us when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Christ, which was before preached unto you. So Christ gets sent back to us to restore all things. All right. Yes, sir. Is there a time frame of, of let me put it, is there a time frame of sin and repentance, like how the scriptures talk about being clean for X amount of time, just that and third. So, is there a time frame for sin and asking for repentance of the of the sin that you committed? Yes. Before you could ask for the repentance. You know, when you get when when we get reformed, that's when it's time to repent. You cannot put off from day to day. You can't say I'm going to repent tomorrow. So when I'm speaking to him, just lean forward just a little bit. When the most high, because that's the, that's the father. When the most high show you through the word that you're doing something wrong, that's the time he wants you to repent. He don't want you to worry about, do I got three months to get it right? He wants you to do it today. And that day, do he want you to do it and never do it again? Now, for you to have a discussion with anybody, so well, I can't, that's not the discussion for you to have. Your discussion is the scriptures told you don't do it. So now what's going to happen after that point, nobody can tell you, but they can tell you that this is what happens when we sin and when we don't listen. Anything starts to happen. So the scripture said, I may haste, I delay not to keep the commandments. That's David got wrote in the Psalms and Sirach, Joshua, Joshua of Sirach, he got it wrote in Ecclesiastes for us to, in Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, to make no more waiting, but do it right then and there, because that is supposed to make the difference. I I'll give you an example. You go to court. You ever been to court? Mm -hmm. And you stand before the judge for a traffic ticket. And you, everybody goes to court looking for mercy. 
we're not gonna stand there and be like, I'm finna leave and go do the same thing, man. <laughs> we don't do that. We were like, please, I know from this point forward that I should have insurance before I drive, operate this vehicle. Yeah, I'm just gonna get the insurance, I'm gonna leave it part. We do something like that. We don't be like, man, do what you're gonna do because I'm finna go right back out there and get in my car and drive. We don't do that. We tell the judge that we are about to apply it right now. You can you understand? That's how it is towards the most high. See, we do it that judge and give him that reverence because we know he finna exact some form of retribution upon us right now. So we're asking for the mercy of the judge not to do anything but to let that be a warning for me right now because I'm finna to apply right now what you're saying. So when it comes to the Lord, we got to understand that the times that we had in time past, that's it. When we got escape, we, we were able to escape it, but God knows about it and he has sent us to one another to tell us to repent. So the gig is up. You understand? You busted. You don't get busted and keep sinning. That's the time. It's high time to awake out of sleep. It's that time right now. As soon as you get told, your gig is up. You cannot continue. You cannot do that because the most high will be angry with you. And then something bad will happen. Now, we can't say what. But all we can do is say, the Most High is going to see that you rebelled against him. Yeah. So is that like the just man that falls seven times and a day get back up? No, nah, I'll leave that. Don't even bring that. Yeah, push that one to the side. The reason is, is because we're just trying to answer somebody trying to decipher, how much time do I got? You kind of get what I'm saying. How much time do I got? Yeah, you told me that I'm in the wrong. How much time do I got? You ain't got no more time. Your time to repent is right now. We could get those precepts. Go back to please ask us. All right, so please ask because chapter five and verse seven. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter five and seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Right. That's the one I was quoting. Make no tarrying to turn. I mean tarrying means delay. Make no waiting, no delaying. Go ahead. And put not off from day to day. Right. And you cannot put off from day to day. I'm going to do it tomorrow. You know, people, when they have the spirit of anger on them, at times they will be like, the scriptures tell you don't even let the sun set. We feel like I'm going to get myself together. And it takes days for you to get yourself together. The whole time you'll be grudging. You'll be mad the whole time. Thinking that the other person cares about you not speaking to them. You being wicked. The most I going to get you. And you mad self. So. I'm mad. <clears throat> yeah. He going to deal with you, man. And he already has dealt with people. So for all the time, we'll be like, oh, he going to deal with you. Y'all be thinking, oh. He ain't doing nothing. Why you think you're having success? In the midst of this, why you think it's so hard? Because he knows how to get you where it hurts at. You dying a slow death, my boy. You suffering. Your suffering is of the Lord. Because you rebelled against him. He make it tough for you. 
because of your stubbornness and your rebellious heart. He don't have to just kill you right now and end it. No, it'll be too easy. When people put you in jail and prison for life, that jail cell is a slow death. It takes the spark out of you, the fire out of you. No more ice cream cones. No more the common basic things that somebody with discretion and well thought out actions and restraints, rulership, power over their spirit. They get to see that you don't. You get to see the most vilest things and live in fear. If somebody going to shank you, stab you, rape you, extort you. What is... I'll be... Yes, excuse me. Um, got a bucket. We have a ban on water. Okay. So make no tear and to turn to the Lord and putting that off from day to day. But soon, so that's what suddenly is soon, suddenly shall the wrath of the most high come forth and in thy security thou shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Okay, what is it? Uh, <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta let me get back to the class. I, I don't know about that, but it's it's deep what you're talking about because um now the whole part about the tearing day to day, like, All right. somebody will tear you because they feel guilty or shameful or whatever, so they feel within themselves they gotta probably make it right. And and for no, that's reason, not what that's that ain't. I don't think that's why they would tear it. Because turning to the Lord, if you feel like that, you are turning to the Lord. If you feel ashamed and guilty, that is turning into the most high. But if you feel stubborn and proud and rebellious, that means I'm going to wait to turn to the most high. So tearing is a is an action of waiting. They not they not going to do it now. Like if you call somebody, and you say come, but they wait. You know, you're like, what are you waiting on? You should be here. They waiting. That's what tarry means, the waiting. So you can't wait to turn. When when we get corrected and show the correct, it showed the right type of way. When you get showed the right thing to do, you must do it right then. You cannot reason with yourself and say, I'm going to do it three days later. I'm going to do it tomorrow. It says put not off from day to day. So the day you get corrected is the day you're supposed to put it in Order. The reason is the wrath for suddenly the wrath of the Lord will come forth. So the most I will sit up there and give you an opportunity to do it. When you don't do it, he's going to start that olive glass. Tick, 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 tick. He's giving you an opportunity to do it. But a lot of times we be expecting something soon to happen. No, it doesn't necessarily have to happen soon. It's gonna the most likely gonna wait until you get comfortable. That's why it says, in thy security. So soon as you feel that things is going fine, the most high come in and sweep that away from you, and he caused something to happen. And that's why people be like, Man, life is hard. I never get a break, I can't catch a break, things was going well. 
I was in my security. So they don't say I was in my security. They'd be like, things were going well. I thought this was going to happen. You planned on this. You relied on that. You banked on this. He saw all of that. And then he blow up on your life and he will tear down the thing that you was trying to establish to support yourself and give you that old stendo in life. Make yourself prosper. You like you made plans without him. How are you going to make plans without the most high? So the most high is terrible, man. He is terrible. He will bring forth terribleness to you. You will make plans for something. The most high will destroy those plans. The thing that you feared. It says, Thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day. Psalms 119. Okay, Psalms 119. In verse 58. This is Psalm chapter 119. Psalm 57. In verse 57. All right. Thou art my portion. You are my portion. So we realize that. Let's let him get it. Thou my portion. In other words, the mind has got the process. You are the thing that it takes for me to have success. The Lord is the thing that it takes for me to have success. So we do understand that part, right? Yeah. Read the next part. I have said that I would keep thy words. I have said that I will keep thy words. Now you said it, that you're going to do it. Go ahead. I entreated thy favor. Stop. I asked for it. I re I'm receiving your favor because the Lord could have just been done with you, but instead he sent somebody to you showing favor to you. But a lot of times you don't look at it like this is favor. You look at it like this is a cut. This is offensive. I don't want to hear it. Why are you coming for me? Why are you correct me? I don't want... No, it says I receive to to in, be entreated is to be accepted. I accepted thy favor. God showed you favor by sending somebody to you. This is a good thing for me to say something to you, for me to talk to you. That's good. So now since you accepted God's favor, read. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. That means I am completely accepting everything that's being said to me. Go ahead. Be merciful. Be merciful. So if you are going to accept what's being said, now you got to ask the most high to be merciful unto you. How you going to ask the most high to be merciful unto you if you finna go sin again? He only winked because of what? Please say ignorance. Ignorance. Come on, ignorance. ignorance. You but you ain't ignorant no more. So if you ain't ignorant no more, why are you sinning? What's the purpose of the sin? You understand what sin does. Sin will bring you down so low that you cannot come up out of that thing. You don't want that. He don't want that for you. So he sent a rescue team in there. So when we come in there to get you, let's go. We're going to help fight with you. Don't be like, I want to stay. I want to stay. Whatever they did to you while you was here, baby, they deceived you. They're going to kill you at the end of this thing. Let's go. 
We are here to help you, to save you, to deliver you. We got your back. I was entreated thy favor with thy whole heart. Be merciful unto me. Go ahead. According to thy word. Because you said so. Why did he have to say according to thy word? Because David understood that God kills. I've accepted because I don't your work because I don't want you to kill me. He said, I kill, I wound. If evil done in the city have not I done it, the Lord. He understood that. So according to your word, you got it wrote here in your contract and your covenant that you can be merciful if we acknowledge our sins. I'm acknowledging and oh, I want to forsake it. So sign me up on the side that says mercy, receive mercy. This person received mercy. This person received judgment. I want to be on the side, the mercy side. Lord, sign me up. According to thy word. That's what he's saying. Read the next one. I thought on my way. I thought on my ways. So when you got favor and we bring this thing to you, you don't got tomorrow. I'm going to stop sinning next week. Stop selling dope this day. I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave my fornicating buddy alone this time. You nuts. You got to think on your ways and you got to remember the most high is going to judge you. He, you better make a decision. I thought on my ways. And even before we can bring forth and be the shepherds the most I want us to be, this is conversion. This is being born again. You got to have the ability to do all of these things and do it because you fear the consequences. And then you got to teach others to fear the consequences of the most high because you understand because the kingdom of God is about righteousness. How is this earth going to live, thrive, reign, and multiply and grow? And be replenished, it got to happen with us first. You got to understand this. We cannot selfishly be like, I want to just keep sinning. You ain't about the building of Israel then. You about yourself and all the sinners of the Lord's people, they have to be right. They got to be done with. They're going to be the most high is going to just sacrifice and say, I'm going to just give them up then. Because they won't turn, they won't change. So you got people that's actually bird fingering us off saying, forget them. And then you got people that's in here, meaning in the body of Christ that are scattered throughout the world, that are misbehaving, that needs to hear this type of stuff. And we got to tell you that, no, you cannot keep sinning. No, you cannot make up an excuse. You stand or fail unto the most How We do understand that. But whatever he sent us to you to tell you about Guess what? That is the thing that's required of you today. Tomorrow is a different day. You live, learn, and you will always be growing. And so the thing that it takes for you to grow a week from now, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about today. We ain't even thinking about tomorrow because the word says take no thought for tomorrow. It's going to take care of itself. So right now today, when he show you what you need to be doing, you need to get it today. Don't tell me. I'm going to get my stuff together tomorrow. I don't want to hear you want to get your stuff together tomorrow. The most high don't want to hear it. You need to be faced with, I'm, I'm going to fix this right now. I see it. I'm sorry. Boom. My next step is forward. It ain't, it was a horizontal side to side. No, and it ain't backwards. It's forward so that you can go vertical. You can go up. Okay. Go ahead. And turn my feet. And up. turn my feet. I thought on my ways and turned my feet. They got to go in a different direction. As soon as you think on the ways and you say this is what's true, now you turn your feet and go. Because if not, it's going to turn you out of the way. Go ahead. Unto thy testimony. Unto the testimony. 
The testimony is the thing that testified that this is the correct thing to do. Read. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. He said, I made haste and delayed not. Everybody understand this? We made haste. We got to make haste and delay not. Because guess what? If we don't, it's stopping something from happening. What is it stopping from happening, Jordan? Shy. Converting. Converting. Also known as what, Obadiah? Born again. Do we understand? Yes, sir. We agree? Yes, sir. Right. Because a person that's born again, even though we have, to, even though we live and learn every day and we're going to still be growing, this is the actions of a person that's born again. You entreated, you accepted this word. And now you are acknowledging that I must not put off from day to day. I must make hairy. I must, in my thought process, turn my feet unto it. That's the behavior of being born again. Do you understand that? Okay. So, to avoid our sins being marked in the book. John 3 and 3 again. This is St. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Yahushai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. So, Israel, we have to be born again. You got to change. You got to be converted. You won't see the kingdom. Read the next part. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? So, Christ is asking, How can he do this? When he is old. Now, he's talking. Read the next part. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeah, he's talking that. A lot of times we ask, how can this happen? Sin, well, because we're old, seeing that we have this habit. These habits of so long. Man, these are killer habits. These habits, they've been with us since the third grade. These habits been with us since high school. This addiction to this sin has been here many years. Read. Yahweh shall answer, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's right. So it takes the birth that comes from the water, which is what? The word. The word. Now, we get word. We get word, but we need to add what with that word? Oh. Works. That's right. We need to add the spirit. We need to add actions. See, you got to show that the washing of water by the word, by your actions. You can't just get the word. But you don't bring forth actions. You got to bring forth actions. And your actions have to remain with you. And you got to fight. 
That's right. You got to fight. Every inch of the way. An inch is a small increment, a small distance. You got to fight. You know what to help your fight? Stop putting yourself in the situation that involves your battle, your struggle. If you struggle with drinking, why would you be in the presence of people that always drink? If you struggle with anger, why would you be in the presence of people that fight all the time? Whatever your battle and struggle is, you have got to flee from and avoid that situation. Situation, avoid people like that. Because if you don't convert and you don't change, you ain't going to enter it in. Verse six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Right. He's telling Nicodemus this. You came out your mother and father, your father and mother. Yeah, it's like that. That birth came from them. They brought you in here. But something else has got to happen. Have you ever seen somebody and you felt you felt the thought that they would never change? Name one. Name a person that you didn't think would ever change. Somebody else. Okay, Judah, go ahead. Uh, my sister's Dolores. Ooh. Okay. His sister. Anybody else? My brother. Your brother. Anybody else? Okay, I'll go so we can move forward. Myself. Do you not see change in yourself? If you don't see change in yourself, you have to keep working until you see change. Go to Gal uh, Galatians, Galatians 6. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. This is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. But let every man prove his own work. Right, stop. Let every man prove his own work. That means the stuff that you're doing, you're supposed to go back and double check it. You know how you do a, a, a letter when you write, an email when you send it, a text message when you, before you send it, you go back through it. What about when you get dressed, you know how you look at yourself to see that you got your clothes straightened out and stuff like that. Sisters, you do your hair, you look at your hair, make sure it's straight, head cover, look in the mirror, whatever, right? You go over yourself to make sure it's right. So the actions that you bring in forth you got to go through that to make sure that you're doing the right thing. You cannot always depend on somebody else to do it because I know that actually we don't want people to come at us over and over and over. How do we stop that? Apply the scriptures. Examine yourself. Prove, proofread, proof go over what you do to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Go ahead. And then he shall have rejoicing of him in himself alone. 
and not in another. When you do that and you're getting it right, you're going to be able to have rejoicing in yourself. You're going to be able to say, man, I'm proud of myself. I'm actually doing this. Is there anybody in here that feels like they proud of themselves because of, you know, you're proud of yourself, okay? Just a few? Okay. Because you do acknowledge that what you're doing is the right thing to do, right? Okay. So then keep doing that. Then it says you're gonna be, so then you can have rejoicing in yourself alone and not in another because now is there anybody in here that sometimes need somebody to that boy tell you that you're doing the right thing okay i believe so you don't have to yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Oh, well, with that being said, it doesn't happen all the time. Why? That's what you're to do. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. Cool. I'm let, so let me speak on the on the behalf, <laughs> which I can't do. Right. Let me speak on the behalf of everybody. We're sorry that we didn't come with that. Well done. Good job. Allow the most high to force it. That's the difference. Allow the most high to force it. See, when the most high force it, that means you're gonna, that light gonna shine and we're gonna praise the most high. And then we're gonna be like, hey, I, you actually did good. You spoke well, you handled that correctly. That was very discreet. You spoke wisely, stuff, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen, And you need it to happen you, by you doing what you're supposed to do. You should be able to have make yourself happy by saying, you know what? I am actually, you know, that's the spirit right there. I'm, I'm doing this. I did that. You should be able to take note when you did certain things. Whether, you know, you turned on this sin or another sin. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. So it's times when you will have to give yourself that that a boy, that a girl, by doing the right thing. But you cannot be wavering, right, wrong, right, wrong, right, 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 wrong. And then Shalom. That's not right. If somebody is trying to press you to sin or somebody is trying to communicate with you and you know that sin be coming through that person you're supposed to lead them along second timothy 2. Shot. Can you write a warning for me? Second Timothy two and verse four. This is Second Timothy chapter two and four. No yeah. man. whatever one I gave to you. Take your smile water to put in. The Second Timothy 
Second Timothy two and four. Let's go. This is Second Timothy chapter two and four. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. No man, listen. No person, if you fight him, you're not supposed to go and then get entangled with the affairs. No, you don't go back and get mixed up. Everybody understand? If you're trying, because that's going to solve the the right, 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 then the wrong situation. Then you go do wrong. You can't even be a partaker. You can't partake and you can't get caught up in the in that thing. If you fighting, why would you do that? No man at war entangled himself with the affairs of his life. The freezer's open. Why? That he may please him who have chosen him to be a good soldier. How are you going to please the most high if you keep going back and getting involved in the thing that's making you sound more involved? You're going to go back and get involved with your sin? Just remember, we went through the Psalms 119. You're supposed to already accept it that the Most High has sent somebody to you and you agree. So four or five days later, you're still supposed to be in agreement. You may haste. You're not supposed to deal with nobody. Some brother's asking about some married woman. No, brother, don't deal with no married woman. She need to go back to her man. Leave people alone. The damsel in distress. All right, Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Go ahead. Verse 1, please. Yes. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. So now if you're going wrong and you ain't doing any of the stuff that this came out, who do you think this word is talking to? It's talking against you. Go ahead. Prophesy and say unto them. They wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. All right. You feed who? Yourself. You feed yourself. That means that you ain't did none of the work. You were about who? Yourself. You were about yourself. You were about yourself. You see, now you saying why you cannot take that role to be full of pride, deny the scriptures, reject the word of the most high, don't convert. Because remember, Christ said, when thou converted, strengthen your brother. So if he wasn't going to change, he was going to feed who? His, the sheep of Christ or himself? No. 
No, if he wasn't going to change, was he going to feed the sheep of Christ or was he going to feed himself? Yourself. He was going to feed himself. He was going to do whatever he wanted to do. So brothers and sisters that are not trans changing, are you not changing? You're not feeding the sheep of the most high, the sheep of Christ. You about self. Sisters, you cannot be about self. The most high is looking for sisters to love him, love his son, love his word, and follow his ways, and leave this wicked world alone and behind and become righteous, beloved, devoted, and committed and dedicated with everything that lies within you. And stop running around with harlot tattooed across the top of your forehead. You playing yourself. The men are already dogs. They already going to get what they got coming for being lawless and reckless and loose. The Most High is going to judge these people together. That's why they keep hooking up together. You see? Wherever there is a sinful man, he's dragging a sinful woman around with him. Wherever there is a sinful woman, she's following a wicked, evil, and sinful man. They deserve each other. And that's what they're going to get, each other. And they're going to be in prison with, in Satan's, sick, Satan, Satan's wicked cell of life together. They're going to have a life of hard times. And the Most High is not going to be pitiful. You can't be like that. You got to change. If you change, you're not going to end up doing the wrong thing. How? You change. Don't change. And see, don't you fall. Dead and bump your butt. You're going to be down on the ground. And people like to, yeah, but they can get up, but they can get up, but they can get up. Okay. Let's see how easy it is to get up. It's better if you're standing than you getting up from a fall. Why don't you just try standing and stay in standing and then walk? You don't always have to learn to be evil to learn what's right. You could trust in the most high. The same way you trust in the future of the most high and say it's coming, you can trust in the future of the most high and say it shall come to pass that if I go off, you're going to jack me up. You can trust that too. You don't have to go get go backwards and then walk so he can jack you up. How gonna preach getting jacked up? <laughs> That's kind of st silly. That's not smart. Preaching, you know. Yeah, we gotta preach from it. I'm preaching from experience. I don't want you to preach from experience. I want you to preach from this is what we're telling you, and you trust that. Do everybody understand the difference? You're gonna get your own experience. I'm preaching from a from a standpoint um, from being wicked, doing wickedness and getting judged in wickedness. And now converting. That's why I say my example of a person that needed to change was me. I see change. I see crystal clear, like clear glass. That wrong was never right and bad was never good. And ignorance ain't supposed to be bliss. And sin ain't cool. It ain't nothing to boast on. Because the end of that thing got so many people killed that I was able to see. And I thank God through Christ that he enabled me. Bing, he turned on the light and the bell rung. And I was able to see and I was able to escape. But it was not no righteousness that I done. It was that. I heard the voice. And I said, well, what is that? Well, this make a whole lot of sense. Because along the way, the most has always been with me and you trying to tell you, don't do that. I listened. Even suffering losses, I still in some point acknowledged it and didn't let the curse of this world choke out that voice that was in my mind. 
Some people do that. And they never come to that voice that will lead them away from the bad and into the glorious light that we want to call good, which is his word. You can't shepherd his sheep in the wrong mind, in the wrong spirit, in the wrong flesh. You can't do it. Even though you walk in the flesh, you can't be of this flesh. You got to shoot for the best. You got to strive to be perfect. You and your house. If you think if you don't if you think I'll be playing her, you need to wait till I get home. It ain't never, I will never let up. It's only one tune, and that's from Genesis to Revelations. That's how every man supposed to be, every woman supposed to be, every child supposed to be. And as men, it's our job to try and persuade our house to walk from precept to precept. You got to spend your time doing that. Don't do nothing else until you do that. You got to get them to agree. It takes time. Got to remember that. It does take time. Okay. Where were we? Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 2. Go ahead. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Who the shepherds? Say we are. We are. Now y'all ain't loud enough. Who's the shepherds? We are. That's right. Should not we feed the flock? So now that we got our instruction, now we need to get out and we need to feed our people. Because Christ said, and we love him. He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. Feed them. We fear the most high. We love his son because we that's what he brought unto us and the example that he set. And we love righteous examples. So now... Should not we deal with the flock? Should not we deal with everybody else? Now we become shepherds. But we had to get the experience. And we're here to get the experience. We just got to set our heart to it, set our mind to it. It's more. Read on. Verse 3. Ye eat the fat. Ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed. But you feed not the flock. Exactly. In other words, you ever seen somebody fall off? You ever seen somebody fall off? That's because they got misled. There will be people that will be sitting among you, and then they'll end up falling off. You're like, what happened to this brother? You kill them that are fed. We're feeding them. And then somebody else come along and kill them with something that they gave, like poisoning them with doctrines, things like that. That can't happen. Verse four. The disease. Now they become diseased. The disease, go ahead. Have you not strengthened? Have you not strengthened it? Remember, I made the video. Well, I don't want to get too far, but. A disease is something that'll kill somebody. This ain't talking about diseases that the center for disease controls be trying to deal with. No, this is talking about the diseases of mentality, spiritual diseases, infirmities, so you can understand weaknesses just like an infirmity a weakness can cause somebody to be feeble to where they die out of the body of christ the same way that a disease a terminal disease will take you out cancer is a disease there are a lot of different diseases lupus all kind of diseases cerebral palsy name one more Autism. Autism. Yeah, that's autism. Okay. 
we we'll call that one too. Is that like a mental defect? <laughs> so that's like spirits. Diseases is something that affects like your organs and things like that. Diabetes. That's a disease. Many people don't know where diabetes come from. It comes from, it's like poison and it comes from an, uh, an unbalanced diet. So you get that disease, the disease of diabetes. I just wanted to separate the part from the um, spiritual things, but the disease, have you not strengthened it? So when people, but, and so spiritual diseases, is, that's acceptable, okay? No. But these are like addictions, the disease. These are addictions. Those handicaps and disabilities, those were done in the time of Christ. And if they are done in present time or future times, that's going to that's going to be on the most high. So, yeah, these are spirits. So that's acceptable. The cerebral palsy, the the uh, the other one, autism. autism. Because you could a person, they could be cleansed and straightened all the way up. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which is broken. So if we're not converted, we ain't going to go into people with diseases, people that are sick, people that are bound up. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Brought it back together. They, they spiritually, mentally broken. They can't get over certain things. Go ahead. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Right. Somebody get drove away. Okay. They get drove away for some reason. They are offended by something. Okay. Go ahead. Neither have you sought that which was lost. Neither have you went looking for that person. Hey, brother, why you don't come? Yo, sister, why you don't call? This, this, and the third. This person, you, they lost. People don't come because they be in sin. Know that for sure. They don't come. They don't come because they in sin. Yeah. Uh, what is sister? What is brother? High percentage of the time, if it's not scheduling, something of more importance, possibly something unlawful, possibly in sin. Let me say that. Because I know somebody going to be out there like, yo, man, I ain't doing nothing wrong. You ain't in here either. You lost. <laughs> but I know there are people that in time past, and this ain't just up to date, all through our time. You know how long we've been fellowshipping and building and stuff like that? They get lost. You know, there was one brother before a lot of you... Uh, come around there was a there was this one brother he would come to the school he had his little job and he would come to the school we even let him stay here can you believe that some of you like huh <laughs> yeah and we let our brother stay in the school um And he was, he wanted to change. He wasn't no bad dude. He wasn't, he wasn't no bad dude. So after being here for a while, he heard something in class that shook him.
the water saw it at the time too. He gave place to Satan. I mean, I never would have thought this man would have fallen. I just didn't think that he would. He showed really good potential. I liked him because he was a person that read with comprehension. Sometimes I have to repent because I will lose my patience with a reader. I like a perfect reader. To me, this guy was a perfect reader. I didn't have to tell him where to stop. He knew it. I jailed with him. I didn't tell him nothing. He just naturally did. He was a good reader. The wild, on the other hand, has got perfect, he had per perfect patience with readers. Brothers, read it on my You could be tore from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just let you read and say, no, okay, this. I'm like, brother, you jacking it up. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> 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 Time I pick somebody else, he must got booted. Um, but anyway, so this brother is here and he's sitting there in one of those seats. And I'm like, listen. Nobody is holding anybody hostage. And you ain't got no chains on you. And his head, something went off. It was like somebody, like he had been handcuffed. And somebody told him the gate is open. The door is open. I saw it in his face. I said, damn. Excuse my language. I was like, did I just say the wrong thing to him? The water, didn't you see it? Do you remember saying I thought you said you saw it? I think we did. Yeah, we mentioned it later on. But that's because he changed. It was a change that we saw it. Did you see his countenance? No, I might have been. Okay. It might have been yeah. Well, anyway, I saw it. I saw him for He was like, for real? <laughs> I'm not stuck here? That's the look on his face. Well, that brother left. He wrote a note and left it on his desk. So he went to drive a truck. I was like, say this ain't so. So that was his loss. So my concern was getting the key back. I got the key back. I ain't talked to this brother. Looked for him for a few times. Me and other brothers went over to this little apartment he was staying at. So I started talking to him and trying to find out what was going on. What was going on? Well, was he just wanted a different job he wanted to drive a truck i said brother let's leave that the scriptures this and the third and then i said the lord sent me man to tell you to get yourself together and that you need to repent and so on and so forth because out of nowhere there was a woman involved and I think she ended up delivering the key back to us. I'm like, so he he didn't want to see our face because of the woman that was involved. He picked some woman up or whatever. So we get the key back. And I talked to him. And he was like, oh, there's just a friend, et cetera, et cetera. So with me talking to him, he was like, yo, Sham, I appreciate it. You know, you're doing the right thing. I know I got to be a certain way. That's how he talk. I know I got to be a certain way. I know I got to be right. All I got to do is keep myself from sin. This, that, this, that. And uh, what else he said? He said, I, I, I know you're a prophet of the Lord, man. I respect that. 
I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do that. So I didn't, I wasn't against them or nothing like that. I just would constantly talk to them. I got them to come to the school again. Who, who the heck showed up? I don't know. I don't know who this was <clears throat> in this body. Well, you brothers have heard when he showed up. I was. He, he rebuttaled everything. He, nobody did it. Yeah. Nah, he was just a different cat. He sat there. He didn't rebuttal nothing. He was just in his spirit. A different spirit was inside of that body. Now, if you want to talk about cloning, somebody cloned this man <laughs> and sent the clone here. But I went to look for the loss. I use that. When I see this, I'm like, okay, when I know that somebody should be here and they not here, I'll go and look for the loss. But the thing is, like David, David, he went back and took the sheep from the wild beasts. You can't make somebody do something that they don't want to do. Or if, the, if they gone, Valencia, knock it off. If they are gone, you're going to be able to see by the spirit in them that they are gone. My man was lost. He was no, not lost. He was gone. He was lost and found. But when I found him, he was dead. I found a dead body. This is the job that you're going to have to do. There are people that don't want to be. It's times I was, you know, building this church and all through the spirit of Christ, all different type of ways. Men, women, both genders, classes. And then I would get out and, and build communications with females and then send them to my wife. Say, did she teach this women's class? I'm filtering over there. I'm done. Then I will come back and I will be like, what happened to that sister? They'll talk to me. <laughs> what happened to that sister? I talked to Jazz over a year before she came out here. Talked to Q over a year before she came out here. I'm like every day or every other day, periodically quite a bit, a lot. So I will be building with people all over the world like that. And filter them into this sheepfold and put them with female sheep. So I'll go and so what happened to this? What, what happened to this sister? Somehow they'll get away. She's like, I don't know. I'm like, then I'll be like, yo, you got to give an account of this. And it got to the point to where I would be kind of like, kind of let down, like, what happened to this sister? I mean, I know that. I deal with them, use scriptures, talk to them, brief it, and now I'm there in your cat. Where this woman at? She had, and then I had to realize what she was saying that yo, Shem, I can't chase these people. Like that, people will run. The thing is, if we could go get them, now I'm telling you how to do your job. You could go get them if they missing, they lost. Something has taken captive their mind. Just talk to them. What are you doing? Where are you at? Why are you doing this? And let them know you have to fellowship. That's not optional. Because fellowship will take these sins away. You get an opportunity to spend time apart with other believers. And you're going to be able to confess these faults and these sins it don't have to be to me because I'm a man, the woman, a woman, woman, talk to this woman. So when you talk to this woman, this woman is going to teach you how to be discreet, how to be a keeper. Twine, you're going to get blocked, my man. That's how big it is, big enough to block you. You got to repent, brother. So, do you see what fellowship does? 
Because you will be out there sinning. You'll be out there as this woman to be out there and finna commit the act of adultery. But in the fellowship, another sister will be like, well, how is this guy? Oh, it ain't working out. Well, don't you know what that means as a woman? If it ain't working out, what does that mean? As a woman, a woman tell another woman it's not working out. Yeah, Charlotte, what does that mean? A woman tell another woman it ain't working out. Well, she got to work it out. She got to, you know, set the example for that man until he, you know, or get him help, you know. Um, like the woman she said it ain't working out to, can you have your husband talk, talk to my husband? And or or if he, I know, I know this ain't something that you brought in, but if he don't believe or he he going off, then she got to she got to show him, remind him of the man that he that that he once was or that he's supposed to be. Okay, remember, I said keep from adultery. You ask this woman, "Where's your man?" She said, "It ain't working out." What is that telling that other woman? You finna, you gonna, you gonna commit adultery. Yeah. You gonna commit adultery. So now she got to talk to her about that. So by listening, I wanted you to remember that detail, because this guy, he might not be trying to talk to her husband. That is actually that's something that yeah that's put in there so that ain't erased or done away with but at the same time now she needs to maintain the spiritual support of this woman because this woman will move on in a heartbeat she'll move on in secrecy and then be like his mercy is what great as love <laughs> she'll be thinking he gonna be pacified for the multitude, she'll be thinking that, oh, I can't, I'm going to keep saying I'm sorry. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And But he ain't going to judge me for this because I had this one night stand. I called it fornicating. She's going to call it fornicating. No, love. You committed adultery. Now you got to see that differently. You got to be judged as an adulteress. Yes. And then what's that judgment? Well, you can't put nobody to death, but you defile. Now you will become a real nun. Because that was the last one you got. <laughs> you a nun now. <laughs> put that at your status your status. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll put that keep that one there. That's your status. Any nuns in here? <laughs> you can't get none. You committed adultery. You got you messed up. See that fellowship would have took you to that sister. And you to confide in that sister that how bad you feeling and he tripping this that, and the third and and she knows what happens with situations like that because even guys when when men are having problems with a woman this one here broke I need me that's how it starts I need me a woman that's gonna keep the commandments. Brother, please, you got to put work in around here. You have to sit down and speak to your woman about keeping the commandments. Because the same way that you have faults and make mistakes and not keeping the commandments or her, you too. How soon do we forget that we wicked as devils and demons too and give place to Satan too and get deceived by him too and then serve him at time too. But we want a commandment keeping one. 
if you are a commandment keeping woman, there's no way you are going to choose a lawless. If you are a commandment keeping man, there are no way are you gonna choose a woman that don't keep the commandments. There's no way. I be getting baffled. I used to be like, like, like sisters, even sisters, like. If you're a woman, how would you choose? How do you choose a man that's not applying the scriptures? You go out in the street and be straight interested. Then walk with Bozo. We got to give him a Bible to read. <laughs> What's this? You walk in with this brother, you just like him. You just like him. You've been fronting for a long time. You can front for a long time. <laughs> You could be ever learning, <coughs> never apply, ever always learning. Sit there all the time you want. That doesn't mean you learning. You learn as you apply. You learn how you do we understand it? Who don't understand that? Raise your hand. So if you don't apply, how they say it in Chinese? You no learn. <laughs> you know you 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 know learn you know learn <laughs> so don't don't waste time <laughs> that's what I said I may haste I delay not <laughs> hey it's re it's real my brothers that's married in here work hard work hard you'll reap their birth fruit trust the scriptures it's not lying their birth fruit i mean their their birth fruit their their birth fruit where the branches are bending it over i believe in the scriptures i know it to be true Work, 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 work. Reason, 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 and go first. Stop looking for your woman to go first, Judah. Yasha Allah, the water. Stop looking for your woman to go first. You supposed to go first. You're the teacher. You go first, but, but, I don't want to hear it. I didn't go first. I mean, they didn't go first. I went first. When they was wrong, I was right. When they was wrong, I was showing them to be right. This is how you do it. And then I had to learn. Let me listen to because. Okay, I'm wrong at that. And you was right at that. But we always look for Sarah not being Abraham. We always look for Rebecca not being Isaac. We got to be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that didn't sin against the Most High. For those of you that are unmarried, why would you go into a situation that you're going to fight? You're going to beg somebody to be righteous. Please. <laughs> then you got to call them wicked. I have a question. Are we a family? Uh -huh. If the elder is the father and the elder women as mothers and the rest with purity, brothers and sisters, if you are single, with the best case scenario to ask your father, what do he think about somebody you're interested in? Listen to the question. What the best case scenario would be to ask your father, what he think about somebody that you're interested in? 
Look at y'all get quiet now. <laughs> See? <laughs> that, that, when, 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 when you're converted, see, <laughs> you would know how to answer that. <laughs> Heck no, nah, they like, when you're converted, you know how to answer that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you seeing it, uh, Judah? <laughs> Man. And like, if I ask him, he's going to shut it down. <laughs> he's going to shut it down. And, and listen, I ain't even went to, I ain't even went to the woman. Did you, did you ask the woman her perspective? Because it's the father and mother. And then what about brothers? Because you with all purity, as a brother, I know that's your man's in them, but what do you think about him as a brother? Because we're not wicked. So asking his brother what he think, he see him as a different light. He would be probably even more lenient than the father because the father is going to be very strict and like, yo, but a brother, he still would give you insight. And then what about a sister? So if your sister turn around and say, girl, he flirted with me, what would that do to you? What would that, what would that do to you? No, 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 no. They're going to make you look like a whore. If you ask another sister, let's get, let's say Renee and Angela. Angela, is anybody middle name? Because y'all be like, he's talking about me. If Angela goes to Renee, No, Renee goes to Angela. Renee goes to Angela and say, what do you think about Nathan? You know, he, well, you know, I was thinking about, you know, talking to him and, you know, dating him. Angela, what's the other girl name? Renee. Renee. So Angela goes to Renee. Renee says, girl, he been hitting on me. Angela going to be like, huh? Should she trust her sister? <laughs> She should trust her sister. She should. How should she feel about Nathan? <laughs> what about a man can have more than one? <laughs> See, we got we having words and ha and having having this fam. This is a family conversation. What is this? Family family conversation. Conversation. And so in this family conversation, this gets warming up in here. According to scriptures, according to scriptures, how should she feel about Nathan? If he get it right, all y'all fine. <laughs> But I, but what is it? She should feel like um, she's not ready, so she should probably just wait and then let the most high handle that. And then when, when the most high feel like uh, she's ready or he's ready, then he'll uh, reveal it to her. Or him. Okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know. So that wasn't the answer, but little man straight shot the shot. Yeah, try, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> and use words with it. According to scripture. All right, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna, you said, how should she think about Nathan? 
she asked her sister. She like he been looking at you. So uh, she should think if he been looking at you, he probably look at anybody like that. Right. So, well, right now she should see. Oh, maybe you got. That's a whore more whore mongering spirit. That's a whore mongering spirit. The Bible says all bread is sweet to a whore monger. So you looking at us the same time? You looking at anybody? And I'm sure that there's somebody else that. Didn't pay you attention. What if I go and ask another sister? How does she feel? Are you going to think that she's lying or that she's blowing it out of proportion? Because he got to be like, it ain't like that. It ain't like that. People lie. Understand that. People will lie to cover up. So now, do you want somebody to just extract their desire on you, or do you actually want somebody to love you? <laughs> so if they in a burning sensation, that's not the type of person you want. But if you wicked, you're going to think that your sister is jealous of you and don't want to see nothing for you. You've been waiting this whole time for somebody to step up. He stepped up. And everybody like and love them, and you ready to say, I proceed. You might proceed. Check this out, and then we're gonna get back to this thing. You might proceed and move forward, and he might deal true and right by you, but I can guarantee you he ain't through looking. I can guarantee you he gonna he ain't through looking because he have a spirit on him that's what that's looking. He got a lot of spirit on him that's looking. And that's why we got to convert, man. You can't just wait for the outward appearance of the flesh. There are wolves in sheep's clothing. You got to actually change and do the work. You can't just be ever learning. If you want to sit here 10 years, that's why people, <clears throat> they grow great. And they'll still be sitting in the body of Yashallah. And ain't changed a lick. And through time, they'll be like, I'm an elder. I know this. I know. And they'll be good with books. But their spirit is still the same. When they run into you, if you link with them, all the inside you got to deal with. And that's why people be like, but you don't know him. See, you don't know him. And we'll be like, but, but I do. No, you know what he show you. But inside, you don't know him. What he do when he go home is something totally different than what he do with you. He, he got the costume on with you, but you get the real self when you get home. That person is not changed. If you are single, you want to be aware of that. You want the way things are supposed to be. You want to take that thing, the best case scenario. Now, you can shoot that same shot that 100% of the people try and fail. You could be another statistic if you want to. Backseat Chevy. You could get it, you could, you could, you could get taken back there. Or slime ball motel. You can get taken like that on a low low. But the most high gonna judge you. Because the most high is not trying to produce that type of circumstances. The most high is trying to bring forth the scriptures. The word made flesh. So we're trying to, we we trying to, the most high is, try, is trying to make sure that everybody have a prototype. A prototype meaning an example. Follow this example. Do you understand? Yeah. Where is the example of righteous marriage is for everybody to get right. sneak and do their deal? Hmm? It's not one. I understand every young maid in here. Nobody wants to be alone. Even my daughters, I understand that. 
but on a low, that's not the way to go. We're not setting the bar. I once asked and got corrected. Casada said, am I setting the bar too high? She said, the bar ain't yours to set. I could do nothing but stand down. For me to hold you to the strength of the scriptures is only right. Don't plead and beg me to allow you to be a whole mother, to take a woman out of season, to deal with her too soon, to do something that's not to the use of edifying. When there are children that's growing up that has to follow the righteous example. You as a man has got to be able to instill faith in this young man that what pays off when you wait on the Lord? Waiting on the Lord, you're going to never be frustrated. It takes time. But if you run off and do it, what, what example did you use? For, did you give to him? If she run off and do it, what example do you use for the other young sisters that are coming up and they get in age and they like, you know, it, I want to be married. I want to start a family. <laughs> Would that run off because they saw her run off and make a mistake and then come back and say, I've made a mistake. I don't want to hear that. I'm telling you the right way. This is, it takes time. Why you are here investing your time, don't invest it in vain. Don't be sitting here letting this fall on deaf ears. Convert. Because if you convert, why did God give Eve to Adam? Because Adam had work to do. So with the work that Adam had to do, he needed help. What do you need the woman for? I'm just saying to consume upon lust. But that's not the only woman that you want or you like or you look and you see. This one, that one, this one. And truth be told, it'd be an Edomite, a Germanite, a Romanite, <laughs> Australianite, Frenchite. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Any dog, any dog. When we convert, you ain't even thinking about that. When you convert, you ain't thinking about that. And our downstairs, we talked about having a fervent spirit. Fervent means hot. Nisha, Mish, what's their name? Nisha is a drug. I've been in the when they got put in that furnace, the heat was so fervent that it killed the men that put them in the furnace. The Lord wants our spirit to be so fervent. Leave them alone, brother. The Lord wants our spirit to be so fervent. Fervent means hot. Have you ever smelled somebody's fragrance? And you say, wow, that smells good. You ever smelled that? And they say, that smells good. You want that person, you want your spirit to be so radiant, so radiant that people know and understand that your spirit is on fire they they know what you about not only do they see you but when you hear when you open up your mouth as a shepherd when you hear let's get some of that when they hear you speak your spirit is on fire that was one guy i got these tapes I, would, I wanted to say some good. There was this one guy, man. I think he might have been from the UK. I used to call him the fire man. 
That's the dude, man. I used to love to hear him teach. I always be like, oh my God, this dude here. He, I called him the fireman. His spirit was on fire with speaking. <laughs> no, it's going to give me an ecclesiastic because, um, It's uh, 27. Please ask us 27. So I was saying about having a fervent spirit. Passionate. Your love for the Most High, what you put in to this truth, the way that you speak, the way that your actions, your zeal, your energy, not just being intelligent, but your application, your application towards the members of your house, pay attention, the members of your house. Who really tries in their house? Raise your hand if you really, really try fervently in your house. Okay. Let your actions be so fervent that people know that you're trying. Can you turn around and be like, I'm trying? Don't you see me trying? Can you turn to them and say that I'm really trying? And they and they know that for real, for real, you trying. And they can't say nothing against it. You're trying so tough that it consumes them like the fervent heat did to the men that tried to put them angels. They tried to kill the angels. But they couldn't. The heat destroyed them. Is your spirit so fervent that it, it shuts down what somebody is doing and coming to you? Because your effort, your, you fervent in spirit. You love the most high. That's how you got to be. That is, listen, we don't do it because I'm going to consume you. I'm going to shut you down. We do it because naturally in us, we have to be right because that's required of us as a man. That's the requirement. You understand that? That's, that's what God looked for. That's what the most high Christ looked for. He looked for me to respond like this. He looked for me to endure this. He looked for me to suffer. But a lot of times we don't want to suffer. We have to suffer. This is a suffering path. This route is suffering. It makes our head hurt. It fatigues us. It wears us out. But we have to endure. Because once we go through the exercisement, according to Hebrews, our spirit is revived and we, and we get freshened up. We get stronger. And now you got to remember that commencement that you went through. I'm gonna get you a bag. <laughs> Wait, why you want your son on a bag? <laughs> <laughs> so Please ask us 27 and 7. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 27 and 7. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak, for this is the trial of men. Right. So once we hear him speak, we're going to be able to tell. Now go to Tobit 13.
Tobit 13 and 8. This is Tobit chapter 13 and verse 8. Let all men speak and let all praise him for his righteousness. Exactly. So the most high and men will praise one another for the righteousness that they are applying. Let all men speak. So not only will we praise the most high, but you are actually acknowledge that this person can speak. The most I said it about Ezekiel, that people used to talk about Ezekiel and say that he was a dynamic, he was a good speaker. So speaking, you are going to speak about experiences. You were going to speak the most high's laws. You're going to speak what to do, what not to do. Wisdom will exalt her children. That's what that means. The wisdom that's inside of you is going to come out. It's going to come out like rivers of living waters, man. When it does that, nobody can stand that deal. They can't stand before that. And those that can, it's not going to consume them to death like it did. But the thing is, our our life of conversion, when we are converted, when we are changed, we're going to have the ability to do all, to do so much. I want to say all things. You're going to have the ability to do so much. To restore. You're going to know. Let me not be in a rush. Let me be patient with your children, with your wife. I've, I've waited years. This is a project to restore somebody, to restore some to help. And I'm still working at home, wife, family, children, sons, daughters. But I'll use help too. Did y'all know that? I'll use help. Yeah. Help me with my daughter. Help me with my son. That's right. Maybe you don't know or understand it because you're not the person that I call. But I do practice what I preach. And it helps. It will help give me a comfort, strengthen. If I'm tired, Yo, I need help. This brother, this person, sister, this is my crutch. I need crutches. This is my cane. Who's helping you? That's why you, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Meaning we have to do what these scriptures say to do. So that we can survive. Our spirit, if we're going to shepherd the sheep of the Lord, we got to understand that the business of the Lord, which is dealing with his people, it starts with us. We get that together. Then we can help strengthen other people and pull them up out of the ways of this world. So let's go back to Ezekiel 34. It was other things I was going to get, but we're going to get here so we can wrap it. This is Ezekiel chapter 34 and 4, last precept. But with force and with cruelty have he ruled them. Right. Hey, I've grown up in times where force and cruelty have people been ruled. Fear. Okay, brother, don't drink. Wait till after you finish studying. You know what force is? Force is when somebody make you do something. We don't want to make you do anything as leaders, as teachers, as an elder, we don't want I don't want to make you do anything. 
I do want to talk you into it if I can. I do want to persuade you. Why? So that you can have a judgment or something else. Second Corinthians five. How many people hesitated calling because they know I was going to talk you out of it? You know I'm going to talk you out of it. So you don't call. I can't force you, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to show you why you're not supposed to. This is the reason why. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Remember, I'm trying to talk you out of it because I know that you're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Go ahead. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Right. And, and we all know, I tell you all the time, I love you. I tell you as a congregation. I tell you in person when I'm counseling you, I love you. Every man, woman, and child. Because I know, because I really need you to listen to what I'm saying. If you know that I love you and the things that I'm telling you is causing pain, you got something to help you fight against the evil thoughts of he's causing pain, he's causing pain, he's causing pain. And what is that? The fact that I do have a genuine love. So I'm not trying to rule. I'm not trying to rule with cruelty. I'm trying to rule in the spirit of the most high in Christ with love and trying to actually tell you. Because I understand that you're going to receive some judgment. Now, it could be good judgment, but it also could be bad, too. Go ahead. According to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Go ahead. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Knowing the terror of the Most High. Go ahead. We persuade men. We're going to talk to you and try to convince you. Go back. Ezekiel. 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 Ezekiel 34 and 4, you see where it says with four, but with force and cruelty have ye ruled them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have taught in the spirit of force and cruelty. That's not how we to be. We can't force you to do anything. So ruling, meaning being responsible, I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to try and do everything that I can to persuade you. Do not run from counsel. Do not run from, from advice. Do not run because you know you're going to be persuaded. You know you're going to be talked out of doing the wrong thing. We have fear of the Lord. I got fear of the Most High. So having fear of the Most High... I'm afraid of that terror. I'm trying to avoid it, and, and, and I'm going to tell you to avoid it too. So at the end of this, at the end of that conversation, you're going to end up seeing it and be like, "Okay, I see that. I don't want nothing to happen like that too." So if you don't want that thing to happen, guess what? You need to remember what was said unto you, and don't do it. And many people know that we are going to try and persuade you. And not force you. Now we're gonna always tell you, you can do what you want to do, but I don't advise you. So because there are people that are out there that's forcing people and fear tactics and stuff like that. That's it's true that the ways of sin is death, that it don't go well with the wicked. All that is true, but we can't physically make you. Not do something. You got to volunteer not to do it. 
and we can't be cruel meaning be mad at you because I'm not, I'm not mad at you i know i leave you alone i know how to do that you don't think it, people that y'all seen i love them brothers and sisters they go out of sight out of what that's it i kept moving You gonna get left behind. That's it. No, I don't hate you. You made a choice. So did I. I chose to keep going. You chose to stop and get off and look around and be interested in things that distracted you and led you straight away from the path. I don't hate you that you got off. I'm sorry that you did, but I gotta keep going. That's not a that's not a part of my job description to keep thinking about you. <laughs> So no, I'm not cruel. I just kept going. I said, "Will you leave?" I'm not mad. I'll keep going. This ain't no heartbroken relationship like you, the woman. And I, I can't get over you. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna be thinking about you next year. No. Uh, -uh. I'm gonna accept. After that morning time that you gone, wow. Woo! Sister gone, the brother gone. Wish they hadn't, but okay. Now we gotta go on to the next. Remember the Lord had to ask Samuel, how long are you gonna mourn over Saul seeing that I have rejected him? The Lord said, stop mourning. <coughs> he made a choice. So we do care. We ain't gonna be cruel. Don't make that choice. And you will always stay in the fellowship of the spirit. Go ahead. Verse five, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd. So why, remember during the time of Christ, Israel, Christ saw them scatter. So why are people doing what they're doing? Because there are no true examples. They need true examples. There's no shepherds. Go ahead. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. So why do you think they're in this under Christianity and Muslim and Hinduism and um, Egyptology? They became people devolved meat unto everybody that's out there when they were scattered. We need examples in Israel. Not the examples of the flesh, the spiritual examples. When you deal right, the Most High knows how to bring people to you to teach them the correct way. Remember, like go to Ecclesiastes 6. Please ask us chapter six and verse. 16. This is Ecclesiastical 6 and 16. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Right. We all need medicine. Is there anybody in here that has never, ever need meds? Medicine. Is there anybody in here that has never, ever need meds? Raise your hand. See? Look at that one. I can't. I can't. Not, not right now. Boy, you just had a call drop. <laughs> we all need. So a faithful friend, listen, is what you need. How do you find it? There are people out there that need somebody to be good to them. Read the next part. 
And they that fear the Lord shall find him. In order to find somebody that's good, that shepherd that we're reading about, what has to happen? You got to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you know what's going to end up happening? What type of person are you going to run into? You're going to run into a cruel one. You're going to run into somebody with brute force. So all we got to do is get right. And the most high will bring them to you. Get it right. Conversion. Born again. Walk the straight and narrow. The most high will bring them to you. It doesn't happen. You remember how in Luke 22 where Christ said, and once I was converted, because Satan, people are fighting off temptation. People are fighting off temptation. Satan desiring to have you. So right now you in the you you in the fighting uh, uh part of your life. It happens to everybody, it happens to Peter. Happened to you, it happened to all the disciples, it happened to Christ, it happened to me, it's happening to all of you. You are in a time period in your life where you are acknowledging and seeing Satan that this is wrong. So, this is Satan. You could be fighting this fight for a while, for some months, for some for some years. But once the most high show it to you, now you gotta commit. And once you commit, now you say, I ain't gonna put this off. I'm gonna deal with this away with this. You don't just be like, Oh, I'm I'm gone. That's too no, stop it. You're doing the most, putting too much into it. You gotta repent, and now you gotta be willing to give it up. If you if you tripping, it's tripping because you holding on to one and despising the other. If you tripping, you you do we know what I mean by that. Right, you still holding on to the to to the sin, and despising the commandment, the fact that you got to let this sin go. You got to stop that. Yeah, you can't you can't do that. We become these shepherds when we. Convert. Then we move forward. And in the process of time, each and every last one of you know a bunch of people. If they hear the voice, cool, fine. If they don't, keep moving. Keep doing what you're doing, growing on a daily basis. The most high gonna bring somebody else. He's gonna bring because he knows that you're gonna be. A bad example to them, or you're gonna be faithful to them. Faithful, but if you ain't converted, what type of person are you gonna to be to them? A bad example or faithful? Bad, bad example. You're gonna be a bad example. It's nothing you can teach them. So if they fear the Lord, why would the most high bring them to you if you're a bad example? Do I understand that? You're gonna become a stumbling block to them. Did he did he bring you to a stumbling block? Have anybody in here been taught to sin? Then why would you teach somebody else to sin? All right. Let's create a stopping point and we'll come back. And we'll finish. Uh, who's this? Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, I'll read five again, and we'll stop after six. Now, with your undivided attention, I want us to actually pay attention. This is the one that you've been looking for. Where does it stop? The end of the precept. So it's like exercising. We run this last lap hard. We get to go home. Now, 
if a volume loads, we finish the rest of these laps. So with all your undivided attention, that means Maury can't pick her nails, Valencia can't write in the air, Dallas got to look in her book. See, anybody loaf, we got to finish. You and Ezekiel 34, Dallas? All right. Ezekiel 34 and 5. We got to take this responsibility upon ourselves. They were scattered because there is no shepherd. So now we got to put this upon ourselves and be the shepherds. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. The beasts are all the nations when they were scattered. So our people are messed up because nobody sacrificed, converted, and actually changed. But now in Christ, this is our job and this is our responsibility to do so. Do we understand that? All right. Sound like y'all hustling. <laughs> Verse six. My sheep wondered. So now it's giving us an explanation on what happened unto the children of Israel. They wandered through all the mountains. See, people, they smart. And they got all education and wickedness. They come up with all different types of excuses. At the end of the day, we got to learn how to deal with that. They want, it says, and upon every high hill, yeah, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And now you're wondering, like, why are they destroyed like that? What's wrong with them? You're not, listen, when somebody is subjected to everything under the sun, you 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 be trying to figure them out, figure the Lord out. When you figure the Lord out, you just be willing to tell them you're not right. That's wrong. This is the way to go. You don't let them sway and change you and teach you the curves and ways of the world. You got the truth. It says, and none did search or seek after them. So people does not care about them. There are people that are out there that are mentally confused and deceived serving these diverse lusts, but nobody's taking time out to actually deal with them. The first form and action of dealing with them is an example. Which puts the ball back in our court, which makes us go first or second. First. It makes you go first. You must go first. You cannot just come full of words because they're full of words. You cannot just come with a doctrine because they got a doctrine. You got to come with something that they don't have. If you get it right, that's it. Time to go home with the water. Go ahead. I mean, y'all, what's his name? Now we'll go ahead and start the communion. Who y'all want to spoke? Who's the spokesperson to say who gets it right? Who you want to put it up? They, listen, listen to it. Be specific. You got to go first. They're going to come with something to say. You will come with something to say. They're going to come with a doctrine. You're going to come with a doctrine. What's going to be the determining factor to restore, to help them see and understand something? Remember, don't get it wrong. Get it right. They scattered. Let's just say, for you go to an event. We out there teach. Remember, we went on the south side doing a uh, riff raff day, and all the people was going up and down the street, up and down the street, uh -huh. in in Mexico land. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. All them people, you could make the event bigger than that. So you got a bunch of people. They they scatter. They got all they got the knowledge of all different type of stuff, right? They got a doctrine. You got a doctrine. 
what is the determining factor that makes the difference between you and somebody else that fear has got God's people he talking about it so we got to talk about it they own all these hills and all these mountains and they brain is fried with all different philosophy by the customs and winds of men so yeah you come with the doctrine of the scriptures what makes the difference somebody answer discreetly who y'all want to be the spokesperson for y'all y'all want judah <laughs> <laughs> what makes the difference to win this person? Okay. I'm saying that so y'all want to bunion to speak up? Judah raised his hand first. Yeah, he raised his hand. Over the oh, oh. Over the over. So okay, how many people? How many people pick a boy? Uh huh. Okay, how many people pick Judah? <laughs> okay, go ahead, Bunyan. What makes the difference? You understand the question, right? Yes, sir. Don't go deep. <laughs> deep is wrong. You already told us that. <laughs> okay, what is it? What makes the difference is we have to bring the thing that we have to bring unto the lost sheep of Israel the things that they need, the things that they don't have. We got to get them what's needed for the flesh because they have a bunch of philosophies, but they don't have the knowledge of how to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to keep to keep themselves from losing their mind. They walk in daily without that information, and we have to come at them, not barking at them, not you know gnashing at them, but we got to come in the fruit of the spirit, giving them hope. And that hope is all of the sins that they don't understand is causing them they judge me. So we gotta give them the way out. Can you do what? Absolutely. Now if anything Judah add yeah, okay. before yeah. I say verse yeah. seven. That's what he said. Right now we headed towards verse seven. That's why I say I'm like, can I add Judah as what he said? Okay. Uh, no, nah, because you said that that they're gonna bring a doctrine and you're gonna bring a doctrine. And the thing is to get them to see that the doctrine that you're bringing is actually following the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. You're actually doing what the Most High will is, wants you to do, your purpose of being here. So I will show them scripture that says that if a man say he loves God and keep not his commandments, he is a liar. So that will show the difference. Um, yeah, that would show the difference with somebody. Like, yeah. Okay. That's what you were trying to say? I want, I, I'm, I, he, I like what he said. But I, I want to add to it a little bit. Okay. Just that. Yeah. Okay. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, we got to go. Unnecessary. Okay. So, just to ask what he said. You going to keep saying that? <laughs> Basically, um, one doctrine here, one doctrine here. You, you basically, the doctrine that we bring, it shows that it that, that it works and that they need to change because the doctrine that we bring causes us to be converted and be born again, and that's the determining factor between the two. The doctrine that they bring in don't teach them to be converted or born again. They actually believe that they can continue in sin. You know, so they run from what's right. So, so the points and factors that we gonna show is through our own actions before them that we are changed. We're born again and we're converted, and everybody that's with us is on the same path. And that that's the path that they need to get on. Okay, you just took them backwards. 
the reason is is because you're saying the doctrine the doctrine the doctrine now judah added to a bunyum a bunyum slipped up and said something i don't think he know what he said he might i could be wrong but to sum it up actions the, 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 the actions so now let me explain nobody did any of you have any of you completely changed to the converted born again in one day no. neither would it neither would it the process was to find you you understand mm -hmm. When Christ dealt with Mary, she had a conscience of what's right and what's wrong in her mind. She feared the most high, but she found Christ. And when he rebuked her, right? She said, I have found the truth. So she went looking for him. To get, <laughs> she went looking for him to embed up and start the process of her life for the rest of her life. The example that he set in his actions when dealing with her didn't change her in one day and that, but the difference between what she understood and what he understood, it stood out in how he treated her. I'm surprised I didn't get it. And that's what, so remember, he used the example of being out there with all the every place we go and all the chaos that we be around. What caused people to humble down and listen? The spirit that we deal with them in. Right. And do you notice that it doesn't matter how many people in this world teach the Bible, that still ain't never stopped us from teaching the way that we teach it. Have you not saw that yet? Do you not saw that we have not assimilated to people that we see and y'all see and y'all know these people they teach like this and they teach like that? What y'all think we don't know and see they teach like that? That doesn't change. That doesn't change. Those that the most high want, they're gonna hear that voice, they're gonna hear it, and they're gonna say, Boom, oh, that's where I need to be. I have found it. It's your example that makes the difference. Okay, that's the that's the answer. Your example. Yes, they got and people in their pride will still be spewing out. Go ahead now, but you can start in their pride. They'll be spewing out all the stuff that they learned. And you're going to be telling them what you know according to the scripture. The thing is, listen, the thing is, you don't have to try and measure up wit for wit. Oh, I'm smart and you smart. Let me tear down what you're doing. You tear down what I'm doing. Edify. Find a common ground to build on. Something straight, something flat, something solid that you can build on. And deal with that. They believe in the Lord. Hey, you know we gotta keep his laws, right? You and that doctrine, I tell you what, this is why. You got a call, you want it stolen. So now we're gonna teach that I should not steal. Just keep it simple, respect them. Because it was point of time. When we didn't know anything and we just start repeating what we learned in history some people go to college they take a they take a course the devil is in the colleges so they know how to manipulate 
situations and teach you a guided doctrine and a, and a guided twisted philosophy and you come up out of philosophy 101 mm -hmm. and now you walk down the street and you meet the hebrew israelites and now you're going to spew out what you learned in college and you're going to frame the twisted lies as truth to you that's your education and that's your knowledge that you paid money for you could say it a bunch of times that's not going to make it true at the end of the day and that's why so many people will not understand or believe that the israelites that would invite the people we proclaim to be the people of god trying to brand us as black hebrew israelites like we're going to make ourselves the hebrew israelites so you got white hebrew you got white hebrew israelites you got a black hebrew israelite so that's where they're going with that thing so we're not proclaiming to be black hebrew israelites we are the only israelites we're jacob's children so you would then treat this person with the utmost respect and say this is why we have this claim now you show them the scriptures and that's it i want you to enjoy the rest of your evening brother you with your wife the dinner most high christ bless you goodbye why can't these guys people why can't you want and the, the blessing ain't for you to get a rose royce the blessing is for you to wake up and come into the knowledge of the truth and for you to lose all the history the twisted lies that you was learning if that's a blessing you don't want god's people to be blessed he wants his people to be blessed you can only greet them that greet you so the one most high christ blessed that's the only one gets the blessing huh no blessing for them that's a wrong shepherd that's the shepherd that's not actually tending to the people of god those are his people too you got to know the difference between what you are seeing in this earth and what the Bible is saying you're supposed to be like. Not being converted, you won't see it. We're not making other people the people of God. You're making God's people the people of God by being an example to them. That's the greatest thing that you can do. That's what Christ did. Setting an example for us to follow. Any questions? That's it. We all understand. Okay. We'll finish this later. Ezekiel 34. So, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26 and 6. Now, this is a prime example. This sister here. First Timothy four. Let me read this. First Timothy four and one.
to solidify the point of the example. So hold first Timothy four and one and let's grab that and then Mark sixteen and nine. Mark 16 and 9. So the first one in 1 Timothy 4, it says, did y'all lose the page? You got to hold them. Ready? You hold in two things, right? Mark 16 and 9 and 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Please stop turning pages. Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in a latter time some shall depart from the faith. So Mary Madeline was one of them. Some, Mary Madeline was one of them. Then it says, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, meaning evil people will teach you to behave and do things and come with reasons behind it. Doctrines that came from devils. So Mary was one of them. Now go to Mark 16 and verse 9. So remember Israel being scattered on mountains and hills. Mark 16 and now. Now when Christ, Yahweh was risen, this is, after, this is the resurrection. Early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. So what did his preaching and example cleanse her of? Right, not disabilities. Devils, doctrines that was causing her to do different things. His example of edification broke her down to the point to where she like, I see and understand that. It's clear. Even though she had been wrong in these double doctrines that was causing her to sin and be free of the law of the Most High, what he did was so gracefully edify her being an example of those things because she already knew that these sins were devilish and allowing her to sin. But him who did no sin, she's like, wait a minute. I need to follow you who ain't doing no sin. So when she realized that, that's what made her spirit broke like that. Because the whole time she had been deceived. His example of dealing with her made the difference. And it didn't happen during the time right away she had to think on her ways. That's what you do as a shepherd. You give them something to think about with the scriptures and your attitude, your actions on how you deal with them. That's why you must go first. You don't worry about what they doing or how they doing it. You set the example with them with bringing it forth. And that's it. Don't think about, oh, you finna go across the street and smoke. Those are your lungs. 
you finna go home to the fornicator and you don't know what they finna do. They finna think on those words that you gave to them. And you bless them. I, I bless you. I hope that the most I give you this spirit to change and understand. The way that you deal with them is going to be amazing. It will be better than how anybody else ever dealt with them. They're going to say, I can do it. I want to change. I was foolish. I know my actions is wrong. And me justifying it is just that, me justifying it. And they'll be brokenhearted. I said, come on, help me and show me some more. Those are true shepherds. Do we understand that? That's, right. That's how you deal. That's how we want to get dealt with. That's how you got dealt with. That's why you're here. Nobody never offended you by teaching you and showing you the scriptures. And even though you went and continued to fight and serve them spirits through whatever doctrines, you repented and you came away from there. And the Most High, day by day, help you. See, one man planted, another man watered, God gave the increase. And here is the fruit of it. Now you're here. Now you got to keep on growing. You don't give up on yourself. Never give up on yourself. And the spirit of the most high that's in the body of Christ, which is his members, will not give up on you. They will always be self-cleansing, self-edifying. The body is always self-edifying. You will always be able to get more help and support from the body itself. It tells you in Ephesians 4, Matthew 26. This is the actual woman, how she came forth. No, we'll get it in this time, Luke. This is how she came forth after realizing this. Luke chapter 7 and 36. Well, we know concerning what Christ said, tell the thing that this woman done, but we'll tell it in Luke. Okay, Luke chapter 30, Luke chapter 7 and 36. One of the Pharisees desired that he would sit with him and went and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman which of the city, which in this a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Christ Yahweh sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. Look at what she did. Nobody ever treated her like that. They always consented to sin. So she stood behind him crying and began to wash his feet with tears. She said, oh, my God, this man is precious. This man is special. I never saw this before my life. When you read, we don't have to go there. Mark 122. Yeah, let's go there. Hold this and go to Mark 122. Very fast. Come on, unbelief. Book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, but he taught them. As one that had authority and not as the scribes. You know what it is to teach with one that have authority? A person that's not a hypocrite. A person that speaks with power, power and authority, with conviction 
with edification. Like this is the truth, the way and the life, the understanding with edification. He taught like I have permission to be an example and to show you and tell you this is the correct way to do certain things and not as the scribes and Pharisees, which were hypocrites. Now check this out. This is to show you to deal with Mary. There was in our synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou, Yahweh, shall Christ of Nazareth, or thou come to destroy us, for I know that thou art the Holy One of God. And Yahweh shall rebuke them, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. So, what did Christ do? To Mary had those spirits to come out of her and when a spirit came out she had no more desire to do the things that was unlawful if you still have a desire to do things that are unlawful that is an unclean spirit you got to be willing and wanting to not participate in those things Let's go back to Luke chapter 7 and now verse 38. So now this sister, remember Simon in Luke chapter 7 says she's a sinner. He don't know that her mind has been released of those unclean things. She ain't, she don't desire that no more because of the teachings, the astonishment of the doctrine that was taught and how he dealt. The, uh, um, the Pharisee looked at her as a sinner. He didn't know her mind. He didn't know her state. So she stood behind, she stood at his feet behind him weeping. She's crying and began to wash his feet. She like, oh, this is precious. She loved this man. This man meant a lot to her. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet like, oh my God. What is this new experience that I'm having? And anointed them with the oil. Go ahead, brother. I'll make sure you got the bread. I don't have bread. So look how special he is. Do you treat those special? Oh, and eh, it's just another person. That's because you. You ain't ready to give up. That those sins, you don't see the, the favor that's been given to you from on high. So they're not esteemed very highly. The scriptures teach you to esteem us very highly. You might be offended. Man, why you got something to say? This is not how she did. That's why she came like that. Because she esteemed him very highly. She was like beyond. She lost it. Lost control. This guy was precious to her. Now when the Pharisee which bid at him saw it, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him. For she is a sinner, not no more. But he didn't know that. That that taste is gone. He saw her in time past. So you can't tell. But Christ knew. How shall I answer and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. He said, Master, say on. There was a, a certain creditor which, which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Mm -hmm. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them would love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said, 
unto Simon. Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time that I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. So when it says that thou gavest me no kiss, in other words, he didn't even greet him. He didn't even speak to him. You ever had somebody enter into a room and they don't even speak? They just come in like, I see you and you see me. And through rudeness, they don't, they don't, they won't even acknowledge you. That's what he did. And he invited the Lord. And another thing is him being a leper. <sighs> Why does that make a difference? Him being a leper. Is it because he's unclean? No, he got a skin disease that could have been healed. But through his ignorance, he remained a leper. My head will oil thou didst not anoint. The priest's head would be anointed and treated with specialty. He didn't even acknowledge the Lord because he said if this man were a prophet. But this woman have anointed my feet with oil. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. So how is she now a sinner then? She at that point was ready to halt and now she needed to fight every day. And Christ let her know you are forgiven for the things that you have done wrong. For she loved what? Did she love after, did she love only during the time she heard Christ is preaching? She loved the most high and feared the most high while she was in sin. She just did not have the level and the understanding of real love and real fear until she was taught. But she still had that portion of it that would lead her to that faithful friend, what we read in Ecclesiastes 6. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. She had that much, the same as you. You had that much. If I tell you who started fearing the most high and loving the most high the day that you heard somebody teaching your history because that's what made us learn that was a big part of it is that when you that's raise your hand do we understand the question did you love in other words did you love the most high and have some fear of the lord before you start learning your nationality no for you you didn't know better but the question is did you love god yeah before you learned your nationality. That's the point that I'm saying. So she did love God. I just added the fear in her. Because some people will have a fear, meaning a conscience, like they will be in the midst of sin and they don't even know what was right and what was wrong. Who, how many of us used to do things wrong and think that the most high was with us? Like say, for instance, he provided. Like say, for instance, if you sold drugs and you felt like God provided for you because you know he knows your family needed it, so he gave you that. Or if you stole and you like the most high provided, man, he made a way. Or you committed a robbery and you feel like the most high helped you get away doing that robbery. Thank God I got away. You see? The police was behind you. Thank God. The God he, they didn't, he didn't allow them to pull you over. So you felt that, you know, he protected you while you did those things wrong. Or you had some unlawful relationship and you thank God that, you know, he gave you this relationship. You understand? Or you addicted. God got me. Yeah, he got you because he created you. He got you because he created you, but he don't consent to those things. He is trying to, he's going to lead you up out of those things to where you are today. So if he was down with those things, you would still be able to do them today right now. And the scriptures, it wouldn't be wrote not to do them. 
So you kind of understand. So he was with her too. He just led her to Christ. And when she saw it and she heard it, she's like, this is it. So she came and found this man and was blown away. She's like, wow, this is it. So she continued to follow him all the days of his life, how he dealt with her. So all praises to the Most High for giving her the spirit to come forth and, and hear the spirit and see the spirit and follow him and leave this example for us that this is how we supposed to look at life by repenting, having a broken contract heart and exalting Christ and his example on how he dealt with her and many other people. So all praises, everybody understand that, right? Yes, sir. All right, first Corinthians 11 and 23. I know the lesson is long, but sometimes um, the process that we have to go through to actually learn, right? It does take time. First Corinthians 11 and 23. For I received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord, Yahweh, that's whom the world calls Jesus. We say Yahweh, that's the Hebrew pronunciation for Christ, his name. The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me." So Christ is telling us to do this to always remember Him. After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye. So there's another thing that Christ said do. So do the bread and then do this wine, the drink of this cup. But as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. If we show his life and struggle. We we'll show all of that. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself. So another word for unworthily, let's make it you're not sincere but i take it that all of you brothers and sisters are sincere okay not discerning meaning separating or caring about the church the body of christ the members because it's about examples you gotta set an example in this church you cannot just be living any old type of way. You have to bring forth the fruit because everybody in here has to learn from your example. What are you gonna teach us? Teach me something good. I need to learn from every brother, every sister, every child. I'm waiting to learn something from you. My mom ain't even in here. I told you, oh, I learned something today. She dealt with me. I'm like, wow, I got to rethink my desensitized emotions. Teach me something. Oh, you, you ain't even got to know you teach me. All you got to do is behave a certain type of way. And when I see it, the Lord going to say, that's what you need to do. Do it like that. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. Because of setting the bad examples. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. How do you judge yourself? By stopping. But when we are judged, we are chastening the Lord. 
that we should not be condemned with the world. So to keep from condemning us, by it please, to keep from condemning us, the most high will chasten us. Okay. So most high in the name of Christ. Thank you for the food and drink, I'm in. Okay, this is body which is broken for you. This is his blood. Okay, this, that's it. Let's go. Please stand. Praise your rules. I'm gonna send out prayers. Y'all gonna do it anyway. Six and nine, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power. And the glory forever in the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lakers prayer, Luke 10 and 2. Therefore I say unto them, the harvest truly is great, 
but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Bless you, most high, king of heaven and earth, and all things most high. In the name of the Christ, send more disciples and teachers to your harvest to gather your people, Israel, and send counsel behind your laws to stand before thy people, Israel. Give to us strength to break down all lives with a word. In the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of Israel. Numbers chapter 6 and 24. Children of Israel, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon and give thee peace. In the Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Children of Israel, bless one another. Most high in the name of Christ bless you all. Oh, sorry. So. All right, brother. Have a good evening. Bye. All right, y'all. Shalom. All right, y'all. Shalom. Christ bless. Good night. Oxal, hold up for a second. You say what?